All right, Big Data Applications and Analytics, Jeffrey Fox Instructor, Lesson 7, Fourth Paradigm. So now we're coming to something which is quite important for me as a researcher working in scientific research. So this is how we change the way we do research, and how the same thing that's transforming e-commerce is actually transforming research. And this way it transforms research is called the fourth paradigm. That's because the first three paradigms are more old fashioned. Paradigm one is basic, basic scientific discovery, theoretical. Uh, paradigm two is observational uh, approach, very classic. Watching apples drop from trees and things like that. Um, Paradigm three was caused a lot of um, excitement when it was introduced, um, maybe around 1980. <coughs> That's uh, simulations, computational science, and the fourth paradigm is data-driven science. The data has the answer. Previously, data was used to check the theory. That was the whole purpose of your data. Now, the theory is in the data because we have so much of it. That's the whole point about data-driven work. Thank you. So here we have a, a, you know, a, a screenshot from a wired, article, a wired issue of uh, September 2008. And it has this dramatic title, The End of Science. And welcome to the petabyte age. Actually, we just explained we're really in the um, um, uh, zettabyte age. There's just petabytes per field, or up to maybe 100 petabytes in some fields. Uh, so, uh, so this this I think this particular article was. Um, very influential in bringing this idea to people's attention. And its title, although quite wrong, it is, I say, actually in some sense, the beginning of science done better. Not the end of science, but it, um, it uh, brought these things to people's attention. So we have these four paradigms of scientific research. Everybody agrees about theory, that's what Einstein or Invented with his equations, or Newton's invented, or the superstring theory is a theory. This is a way of thinking about the world with equations traditionally, uh, or maybe which can, and which told you what's going on. Then we always had experiment and observation, and that experiment and observation gave data, which came information, came knowledge. And for instance, Newton's based his theory on apples falling from trees, at least that's the claim. Um, so that's the second paradigm. So for a long time until maybe 1990, people always identified two modes of research. Whether that, Then along came lots of computing, and that led to so-called computational science run on supercomputers, which added to this repertoire the ability to gain knowledge by simulating a theory. And that simulation would tell you maybe things that you could never see from experiments. And so that allowed you to, to get scientific insights of a new type. Now we have this so-called fourth paradigm. And what's somewhat controversial is whether the fourth paradigm is different really from the second paradigm. Because uh, like the Large Hadron Collider, it was always called experimental particle physics. Uh, but it's the world's biggest data in terms of science. And so is it the fourth paradigm or the second paradigm? Not so obvious. Uh, what's characteristic of the fourth paradigm is that you're, you're using the data to drive uh, the discovery or to drive the scientific inquiry, where traditionally you use theory and things like that. But actually, whatever you look at, you should probably be aware of the theory, because the theory will guide what you do. And it is wrong to think that uh, the data-driven approach uh, gets rid of theory. Like even Netflix, which is using purely data-driven approach and it's data science, consumer data science. It is um, actually um, 
using uh, in some sense, uh, if not theory, at least a thought, because they choose uh, which parameters to look at, or they want to look at uh, things connected to you, things connected to your family, and that counts because they know people, individuals, and families watch TV at the same time. And they know various categories that you're meant to look into. So that their um, so-called data-driven approach is, is actually guided by theoretical insight. There's this famous book from Microsoft on the fourth paradigm, a free book you can download. And um, I recommend it. It's um, it's again whether it's method two or method four is still pretty interesting. So okay, here is the final slide in this uh, short uh, segment. And um, this fellow always looks pretty cheerful to me, scooting around in Silicon Valley. He at the time, in two, which is probably these things usually change. In 2008, he was heading Walmart Labs, and he was teaching a guest class, and he was addressing the famous Netflix challenge competition, which is trying to produce a better way of predicting uh, what people want to watch, and that uses machine learning, a nifty classification algorithm, and he had. Student teams, and he contrasts two teams. One, brilliant mathematicians came up with a much better algorithm, and team B used a very simple algorithm but added more data, uh, especially data about the types of movies from the Internet Movie Database. So, this was actually what I told you about theory. The theory was either use the raw data or use the raw data plus another data. The team that used a better theory got the better answers. He actually interprets it differently, that more data produces better algorithms. But actually, it's a contrast between thinking carefully, which says we really should add this uh, type data to the data, to the data we're looking at, uh, as opposed to doing better mathematics. So mathematics is not the same thing as theory. Theory needs real insight. So that's a reasonably important um, observation. Okay. Thank you very much. The end of this lesson, Unit 2, Course Motivation, Lesson 7. I had a little personal note. In the 80s and 90s, we only had theory and experiment or observation. But uh, the computational science approach, method 3, was being recognized. And so I thought that was pretty exciting because I always had used computers, actually mainly to do what was probably in the end more important, data analytics. But at that time, can cut. Data analytics was not very, um, I mean, the experiments weren't very big. There was no concept of big data. Deep learning was um, just being invented, but there was not enough computers or data to implement it. So I tried to set up a computational science curriculum and failed. And that's a good part of the reason I left Caltech. I should, it was a strange decision. You sometimes make uh, dubious decisions. This was one of my dubious decisions. Because um, Caltech was a, had lots of positive features, it just didn't agree with me on computational science. I should have uh, smiled and lived to fight another day, but I left. Because uh, it, was, it wasn't such a great idea, because there were not a lot of jobs, and computational science as an educational field has not thrived. But as we now know, uh, the method for the data-driven approach or deep learning or data science has emerged. And this is much sounder than computational science because they have order of magnitude or maybe two orders of magnitude more jobs. It's a dominant part of the job spectrum, not a niche which uh, computational science was. So the curriculum is not just perhaps more interesting, it's certainly more interesting. And uh, I see that, uh, that you know, you, you get really excited about things and focus. But sometimes you can get it wrong. You have to remember that. You have to take the broad view and not realize you're getting let down a narrow garden path into a bunch of weeds, uh, which was uh, what happened to me. All right, so that's the end of that personal note. Let's uh, get on to the next lesson. Thank you.